Well, a beautiful night here in the Emerald City uh, as we get set for game two of this three-game series here at Safe Cold Field between the Mariners and the Chicago White Sox as the Mariners have just taken the field on an idyllic evening. Uh, hardly a cloud in the sky, a little on the cool side by cool. I'm probably talking right around 70 degrees here. Great night for baseball. The M's trying to win their first game against the White Sox this year with last night's loss. They are 0 and 4. And right now, let's have a look at the White Sox lineup, Mike. Thank you, Dave. For Ozzy Gein and the White Sox, Juan Pierre lead things up. Want to keep them off the base. 33 steals for him so far this year. The scale, Rios, Canerco, Marcotte, the veteran, will be the DH. Andrew Jones with a home run in last night's game. He hit six. Pierzinski, Ramirez, and Gordon Beckham, the second baseman, will hit ninth. You look at the numbers for Doug Fister this year. ERA right at three and a half. 90 innings pitch for him. Only 17 walks, 41 strikeouts. And the defense behind him. Bradley will start again in left field. Gutierrez in center. Ichiro out in right. And across the infield will be Lopez. Jack Wilson in shortstop. Higgins and Smoke on the right side of the infield. And Josh Bard will do the catching. So there he is, the tall right-hander out of California. Doug Fister in his last outing against the Angels. Went five and two-thirds innings. Gave up a, a dozen hits and six runs. So still trying to get back into that rhythm that he had before he went on the DL with a fatigued shoulder. And Juan Pierre will step in and lead it off for the Chicago White Sox, who won 27 of their last 35 ball games. That's a pace I don't think anyone could reasonably expect them to keep much longer. But boy, they have been the hottest commodity in baseball. So Juan Pierre steps in, and the first delivery is a strike. The man calling balls and strikes, Mark Carlson, tonight. 69 degrees at game time. Pierre, a little looper, behind the bag at second. Right there is Jack Wilson. One away. Wind not a factor out of the northwest at two miles an hour here tonight. Omar Vizquel, a 43-year-old wonder uh, with a couple of base hits last night. And taking a little low ball one, one ball and no strikes. Jose Lopez just barely uh, in on the grass at third base. 2-0 to Vizquel. And there's a strike. Lou Pinello, as we mentioned, announcing his retirement today. Uh, the thing that I remember, will remember about Lou Pinello most, at least in his Seattle tenure, and I think everywhere he's been, quite frankly, because he came with that tag, is his passion for the game. And I think he was a pup out of Billy Martin. That was the man he admired more than anybody else he played for. He learned that passion. From Billy Martin. I think he played the game with that passion and it never left him. Never. And that's, I mean, when you think about how long he played and how long he coached and then managed 40 plus years, almost 50 years of that, that's, that's rare. That's a very rare thing to be able to come to the ballpark with that type of energy and enthusiasm every single day. And I can tell you, for being in that dugout, he didn't care that it was in the middle of July and that you were in Detroit. And, what the weather was like. He wanted to win that game just as badly as he did the first of the last. And a high pop up on the infield. And coming down. Right there, the first baseman, Justin Smoke, to make the catch. Our Marine Corps leaders of the game note on Lou Pinella 840, 711. A 542 winning percentage as a Mariners manager, American League manager of the year, twice with the M's. 1995 and of course in 2001 when the Mariners won 116 games and here is Alex Rios strike on the outside corner Mister again finds a mark on the inside corner and the count on two on Rios so that is 16th home run of the year last night Give the White Sox a lead. They never gave up. There's a base hit right back up the middle. 
Lou Pinella taking over in 1993 after a disastrous year in 92 under Bill Plummer. And it started out on a disastrous note for Lou Pinella in 93. I'll never forget it because the Mariners were in Peoria, training in Peoria for the first time, but they didn't play in Peoria because they traveled everywhere because the stadium wasn't done yet. The Padres were not there yet, and so the Mariners trained and they took the bus everywhere, everywhere that spring, and lost their first 10 exhibition games. <laughs> and the fastball is high. Ball one, one ball and no strikes, and after the 10th loss, they were coming back from wherever, and there was a little league game across the street and he said Bussy stop the bus and the Bussy stopped the bus he says all right let's all get off and go over there and see if we can't beat those guys <laughs> I remember it well <laughs> <laughs> and, as, and as you recall you had a better than 500 record after that I mean at the end of spring training yeah yeah but, but it, it was off to a really tough start and as you mentioned it made it worse because we had to travel every single day we didn't have a home ballpark but that was his attitude. That was his attitude from day one in spring training. 1-1 one, one pitch, a swing, and a miss by Canerco. And I, th I think for me, because that year, I actually reported with the pitchers and catchers before the regular Because you were going to be a catcher. Well, I was, I was going to try to be yeah. the emergency catcher guy, so they had me come down early. And it was even then, pitchers and catchers only, and that's what he was talking about. It was great. And ground ball to third. Lopez down to second for the final out to force out on Rio. So, nice start for Doug Fister. A hip, a man left. We are underway. Good to have you as part of our baseball bunch tonight. The Mariners are coming up. Left-hander John Danks delivered to, uh, delivers to Ichiro and a strike across the letters as we are underway in the bottom half of the first. A very quick worker, the southpaw, and it's fouled back and out of play. On to the count. He's a quick worker. He tries to, as most pitchers do, stay ahead of you, and he has pretty good success at it. And ball grounded right to third. So Omar Vizquel throws him out. Let's look. At the Mariners lineup, Mike. Okay, after each row, it will be big as then it's Goodyear. As Goodyear has hit a couple of home runs off of Danks, Lopez, Bradley, Casey Cox beginning the start as a designated hitter. He will hit six, then it's Smoke, Bard, and Jack Wilson, the shortstop, hits ninth. Numbers for Danks, ERA 358, 118 innings pitched, only 39 walks, 91 strikeouts for him. He has given up seven home runs. 
And here is Figgy now. And taking a strike. Tonight, Dave Sims' half night here at Safeco Field. As I understand it, Dave's going to be judging some fedoras here yeah. in the second inning. Yeah. Strike over the outside corner. There's a bunch of them from the look at. <laughs> and a swing and a miss. So on the changeup, Figgins is down on strikes. Well, let's take a look at the defense behind Danks tonight. It'll be Pierre Rios and Andrew Jones in the outfield. Across the infield, Pascal Ramirez, Beckham, Paul Canerco over at first base. And A.J. Kruzinski will do the catching. Thanks. Looks like he's taking a page out of Mark Burley's book, isn't it? How quickly he works. Burley's always done that, trying to work ahead with his fastball. Looks like Danks is doing the same thing. Every time Burley goes out there, if you've got a pitcher that works quickly, you got a shot at having a sub two hour ball game. Yes, yeah, somebody that's opposing him because he's definitely going to keep the pace up. And that ball drilled to right center field and just kind of gliding over is Alexi Rios to retire the side. So very easy first inning. Three up, three down. We go to the second. No score. It's always a, a great pleasure when Jay drops by. Welcome back one Thank more time. Thanks for having me back. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> At least I haven't worn out my welcome yet. Mark Kotze is the hitter, and he has taken a ball and then fouls one away. One ball, one strike. Lou Pinello today. We've been talking about it. Uh, give me some indication when the Cubs were here. I talked to him. In the down in the dugout, and I said, uh, "What are you going to do at the end of the year?" He said, "Well, he says I'm not going to announce it until the end of the year." I said, "Well, how are you leaning?" He said, "Well, I think you know how I'm leaning." <laughs> and and I said, "Lou, you can't sit on that boat every day no. down there in Tampa Bay no. at, for the rest of your life." He said, "Watch me." <laughs> so, I think so. we all know at some point in time, though, he, he, he's too good for the game. He's too knowledgeable. Uh, and I think that uh, there's nothing else out there. Shagging a white ball for a year or two, you know, enjoying the summers finally for a little bit. But he uh, knows too much of the game, and something tells me he'll be back in some capacity. Or something. Fly ball popped up to left field, and Bradley got turned around a little bit, fooled it just a second. But he makes an easy catch out there in left field. I think we both will agree, though. I think he's probably not the happiest camper in the world if that kind of snuck out. Because I don't think Lou wanted to announce it that way, not in the middle of the season. 
Uh, I think in knowing Lou, um, he's not about little sideshows and distractions. I think he would rather wait until the end of the year. But um, I was a little shocked that it came out this soon. Well, he, he was mad at he's that mad at his agent Alan Nero this afternoon because it's supposed to be announced at four o'clock Chicago time. It was announced at two o'clock, and he said. This thing wasn't supposed to be announced for two hours. He said, I'm not too happy about my agent letting this baby get out of But, see, I, I thought he would just wait till the end of the year and then just go out the back door and say thanks for coming. Well, when I, when I came to the ballpark and people were asking me about it, they asked me if I was surprised. And I said basically the same thing. I was surprised that it came out today. Right. I'm not surprised that maybe this is going to be his last year. I'm not surprised no. to hear that. No. But the fact that we heard it today was, was surprising to me. I agree. I agree, because Lou, Lou's all about winning and whatever. Uh, he doesn't want any extra uh, sideshow on the side. So Nice change up and swung on missed by Andrew Jones so quickly. Two down here in the second inning. And A.J. Pierzynski will be the hitter. I love these guys. They just keep running them up there. Unbelievable, huh? isn't it? When you were in New York, what was Lou doing then? Was he on TV or was he still in the dugout or what was he doing? When, when I was there in 88, he had just, they had just fired uh, Billy Martin about uh, a month into it and a month and a half into it and brought Lou in. And then Lou was basically filled in. And uh, like the second day, I was out. He said, <laughs> son, see you later. Off to Columbus you go. <laughs> so that was my uh, two days Little did you know Lou. you would meet again. <laughs> <laughs> and I chop her over the mound. And Wilson has to wait for the second half to throw him out so quickly. On here in the second. The White Sox. One, two, three. Good to have you aboard. As we go to the home half of inning number two, no score. There's Dave Sims out there in the uh, hat club area uh, picking out his favorite hat. And I think the, the man in the in the stovepipe hat, the Abe Lincoln hat, was the guy that he picked. To, there were the three finalists. And I believe the man in the tall black hat was the winner. <laughs> were, you, were you a hat guy? Uh, no, I, I well, don't. You're bald just like Sims is. How come you don't use one? Uh, you know, I was a guy that wouldn't put my game hat on until the game started. I, during BP, I never wore a hat. I hate it. Still do. Well, the guy that changed that hat attire during batting practice was Ken Griffey Jr. Turning it around. But what, what was your first reaction when you saw him? <laughs> I mean, that, that was a no-no, man. Yeah, I told him to turn it around, and he says, you watch me. I said, all right. That's good, for, that's good enough for me. <laughs> then I saw him take BP, and I went, you wear it any way you want, son. <laughs> so Lopez is gone, and here comes Milton Bradley. Everybody's been asking me today what I remember when I first had a chance to meet Lou. What do you think about Lou in 93 in spring training? What sticks out in your mind? 
I just think immediately when he stepped in, he commanded respect and, and accountability. And I think that's what changed the whole scenery, the whole atmosphere. Uh, and he came in with the World Series ring and a great coach sta coaching staff. And uh, from that point on, I think it was just, well, what did he say? Give us three years and I'll have this thing turned around. And in 94, we were on a roll. Man. Right. So before the, before the that's right. strike. That's so right. That was, uh, I loved it. Because this, I'm, before he got here, it was pretty miserable. Three pitches, see you later. That was out of the strike zone. Remember 94 vividly because when the strike came, we were in Oakland and making a heck of a run. We were. We we're hot. Yeah. And Casey Kotzman is the hitter, the designated hitter. That was the beauty of Lou. When Lou came in here, um, I mean, it really changed things around. Put Seattle on the map, no doubt, and uh, got the fans fired up because I think even when he came back, they were looking forward to Lou going out there and doing, putting on a sideshow. So, going back to '94, little do you know that the Mariners won the World Series that year. They played the Atlanta Braves, <laughs> and, and, and we re recreated that maybe. Jay and I are still waiting for our rings, <laughs> by the way. <laughs> Junior at home with two outs to the bottom of the ninth. Yeah. Wow. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, we played that on the radio, too. That was a, maybe the biggest win in Mariner history. <laughs> I still got a copy of that right somewhere. <laughs> One ball and two strikes. To tell you the truth, we had went to the studio and put, you know, like, like an old re recreated game, had the crowd under it, everything else, had the mallet with the hit the bat. Sounded like a real game. <laughs> And a ground ball to shortstop and a nice throw, but not quite in time. Alexi Ramirez couldn't get the hustling Casey Cotton. It's a pretty good range right there. Well, the second baseman Beckham was playing way over in the hole, and you'll see him come across the backside of Ramirez. He tries to make the play, but Casey smelling the base hit beats it out. I Seems like, like we'd run a little bit faster, right? But you can get that much closer. Come oh, on, man. You'd stretch those hamstrings out a little bit further. <laughs> I know you smelled the knock when it was there. Oh, baby. <laughs> Trying to run out of my shoes. I like this kid here, Jay. He could swing it. I love it. I, you know, he doesn't get cheated. Uh, you know, he's just a southern boy that brings the attitude and uh, the body language. And he's, you know, proud to wear the uni. And I like it, man. He's still young. He's still naive. Doesn't know. The great thing about it is when you're this young, you don't know about scout reports, and you don't go watch video after every AB and put all that extra pressure on yourself. He's just up there seeing the ball and hitting the ball. He get a chance to make a name for himself. Change and it's pulled foul down the third baseline. But I remember him beating up on Chicago when he was wearing that Texas uniform too. So I think they know they know a little bit about him. And with this change up out in front of it a little bit, pulls it foul. I was happy for him after the break, get a chance. He went home, settled in a little bit yeah. after the trade right away, and he swung the bat much better than when he first came up here for the first couple of days and struggled. But it seemed well, like he was more relaxed. Well, you know how it is, Mike. When oh, you come I know. up to a new team, I mean, it's. I mean, I was watching him during pregame, warming up for the game, just trying to talk to somebody, get the jitters out. Yeah. He's trying to get to know his new team. He's trying to get to know the league, the umpires. There's so many different things that go through your head. It can be a whirlwind, but he can play. He can really play. Goose Creek, South Carolina. Let's not forget he, he was in college in 08, so he's got up here pretty quick. The game cut. University of South Carolina. Swing and a miss. Hard stuff from a breaking ball right in on his hands and down he goes. That's four strikeouts already. And John Danks ends up striking out the side here in the second. And after two, there's no score.
Right on the outside corner to Alexi Ramirez as we open inning number three here on this beautiful night at uh, St. Cole Field. There is a bunt down the third baseline. Forget it. It's a base hit. About a 30-foot beautiful bunt by Alexi Ramirez right down the third baseline. Well, even as a third baseman, if you're playing in, you're not going to do anything with that one. That's just a perfect bunt right down the line. Take a look at it. Just Doug, watch, watch and admire. Yeah, that's all Doug can do, hoping it goes foul, but it's just a perfect bunt. Put it in your pocket and go get the next guy. And, you know, that bunt is, as it got out on the dirt, you could see that it's tilted inward here at Safe Cool Field, and perhaps no other park in baseball is tilted as much as... Chicago's because the Bossard boys there have that tilted in. You get a lot of base hits, even if it rolls off the grass. And that's something that all third and first basemen should do when they go into a ballpark for the yeah. first time. Just before batting practice, just roll some balls down the line to see what it's going to do. Will it stay fair or foul? If you have a chance to let it go, but it's something that everybody should be in the habit of doing. I learned that in A ball when I was back in the minor leagues, Jake, well, having to do it. Jordan Beckham pops the ball up outside of third and that's a play over there for Lopez. Okay, our trivia question, our AT&T trivia question. Out of the four winningest active managers in baseball, who has the highest winning percentage? Is it Bobby Cox of Atlanta, Tony La Russa of the Cardinals, Joe Torre of the Dodgers, or Lou Pinella of the Cubs? Who has the highest winning percentage? What do you think, all four of them in the Hall of Fame? Uh, I don't know. Lou Pinella's number 14 uh, all time. I, I don't think there's any doubt that Tony La Russa mm -hmm. is, is a Hall of Famer. I don't think that there's any doubt that Bobby Cox is a Hall of Famer. No doubt. Uh, or he has a handful of rings. Well, though. yeah, you know, that's true. I, I think the guy that's quite frankly on the cusp is Lou Pinella of those four. Right. I think, however, the guy with the winning is... Percentage. All three of those guys are higher than number 14, so I think Lupinello's last amongst that list. I believe it's probably Bobby Cox. I agree. And by the way, there are incredible rumors floating around, and rumors only, that Mr. Torrey and the Dodgers are having problems. Uh, Reaching agreement on, on a new deal, and even if he wants to come back, there's a shot at also. the throw to first base. No shot at the double play. Good play by Lopez to throw out Juan Pierre. Rumors that Joe Torrey may be the man selected to take over the Chicago Cubs. Even though Ryan Sandberg is. Uh, Managing at uh, AAA down at Iowa. There's all sorts of rumors. There's rumors of Joe Girardi actually stepping away from the Yankee job and taking the Chicago Cub job. So it's it'll be, it could play. be yeah. very interesting. Let's throw Jay Buhner's name in the hat. Yeah, why not? Send him to Chicago. <laughs> sure, I'll go, I'll go visit. <laughs> it's a great city. I love it. One of my favorites. You want to get back on the field again? I think I think Michael and I talk about this all the time. I think both of us, at some under the right uh, circumstance, would love to get back on there. I'm, that's what I'm doing right now with the 14-year-old team. I'm helping coach this O'Brien 14-year-old select team. I love it. Um, so it, yeah, at some point, I'd love to continue to give back. That's why I go to spring training. I think uh, the game's been great to me, and I think it's everyone's responsibility to continue to give back to the great game. What am I going to do up here without you two guys? Well, we'll wait till. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't say that. <laughs> God bless you. That's why we love well, let's you. Let's hope we're waiting for a long, long time. Yeah, let's hope it's not tonight, buddy. Not going to <laughs> oh, to the cow. And that strike three call right at the knees of Omar Vizquel. And here in the third, no runs, a great bump single, but that's it. We go to the bottom of the third. I'm late. I'm late for a very important date. The way they're playing this game, no score.
Sports Broadcast is on AFN, the American Forces Network, broadcasting uh, to the U.S. Armed Forces serving 175 countries and aboard uh, ships at sea. They're watching around the world in Iraq and Germany, Italy, Southwest Asia, South Korea, and Japan. So welcome, everybody. And men and women in the service, we thank you for everything that you continue to do for us here How cool is that? at home. Oh, oh, man. That's awesome. It's the least. Josh Bard quickly has two strikes on him. A call strike, and now he fouls this back. I'm Dave Niehaus with uh, Mr. Buner, Mr. Blowers. On a beautiful night in Seattle. We hope it's a nice evening or day wherever you may be watching uh, around the world. In peace, hopefully. Too high to Bard, a ball and two strikes. Here's that cutter. But down low and inside. Another one. I don't know about you, Mike, but that was probably the hardest pitch for me personally to lay off, especially with two strikes. The one that kind of starts mid and just cuts hard in on that back foot. And I was a sucker for that one. Remember Jim Abbott? Oh, man. Those straight saw blades. He threw that cutter and just be relentless with it. And I can remember the first time I faced him. The next day I came to the ballpark, I had to put a thumb guard on because he was just <laughs> living on my hands. I don't know how many bats I went through that night. And a swing and a miss. Had a breaking ball, and that's five strikeouts now for John Danks, one of the most amazing athletes I ever saw. That is amazing. Quick with that glove transfer. All right, time for the AT&T trivia answer to our question of the four winningest active managers in baseball. Who has the highest winning percentage? Joe Torrey, you said 35%. The answer is Bobby Cox. I was right. Then Joe Torrey, then Tony La Russa, and then Lou Pinello. All pretty close, though. Yeah, very close. Jack Wilson has taken two of them out of the strike zone. Well, you were talking about Joe Torrey. Possibly leaving LA, he won't have a hard time finding another job. That's for <laughs> sure. You think his, think his resume is pretty He'll good. Okay. <laughs> We're talking about the cutter, Jay. You know who helped me with that, Edgar. And he said the thing that you don't want to do is try to pull it. Just try to hit that pitch back up the middle. Stay inside. Yep. Stay inside of it. And after that, I had good success against all the guys that use the throw cutters against us. Jack gets a walk. Mariners have a base runner. But that's 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 how I started to hit it. And so after that, I hit lighter fine, and we had Abbott. Who else was in that group that threw cutters? I mean, Finley, yeah. Langston. Yeah. I mean, just straight. I kept throwing the knuckles, but straight <laughs> salt plates. <laughs> yeah, I kept thinking I'd get the head out. Each or all, a ground ball to third, his first at bat. You were definitely talking to the right guy, though. Yes. Nobody could do it better than Edgar Martinez. Just wore out left handers. <laughs> they didn't have anything to get him out. I mean, then again, he wore out right handers, too. Good point. Didn't like the knuckleball, though. I remember him <laughs> not like the knuckleball. <laughs> yeah, but you did. You sure did. He wore out Wakefield. Where, where were we at? I think it was against Charlie that Edgar was complaining about the knuckleball. I think he took a fungal yeah, up there, yeah. didn't he? He took a K-100. Yeah. He took a K-100 to the plate. I saw uh, <laughs> Jose Cruz do the same thing. Is that right? Yeah. And that's a strike, first of all, to those who don't know what a K-100 is, tell me. K100 is a uh, fungo bat, but it's one of the old school fungo bats that were still pretty heavy. Now they make them out of every kind of wood you can think of. They're super lightweight, Mizuno, all the different bat companies. But at the time, a K100 was probably about 36, 36 inches. And I don't know what the drop would be, but it wasn't, uh, it was about 10 ounces lighter than a regular bat. And so it's all about, their theory was thinking it was all about bat speed. Mm -hmm. So. 
It's funny. And, and, and Cruzy, <laughs> Jose Cruz, he actually got a base knock. It nicked him. Thank you. So each year old nicked on the shirt. Pushes Jack Wilson down to second base. Tries to run it inside. And I think just barely gets a piece of his arm guard, I think. What do you think about all the armor everybody wears these days? I'm not a fan, but you know. Then again, I guess if we had it when we were playing like this, maybe I'd have worn it, but I doubt it. Some of the guys just were, were wearing too much. I like the fact that they cut it down a little bit. Wear it if you're injured. Yeah, you know I, mean, I mean, if you, if you, you need to protect, protect it. it. Yeah. Exactly. Otherwise, get up there and grip and rip. Be like basketball players when they're wearing knee pads and elbow pads. They used to. Chicago used to wear shorts. That's what I was just going to bring, bring that up. We were talking about it last night. A high chopper double play ball. There's one and there's two, and that will be that. Six to four, six to three, rather, the double play. And the Mariners will leave a man aboard. No score after three. Jay Buter and Mike Flowers. Phone coming up large. I like it. I like it. Straight back from Montana, baby, right, just for right you. Right on, man. Good stuff. Good stuff. We got a good ball game here. A couple of guys on top of the game. Do you like to see that? And Mike, we talked about Fister a lot. If he stays down the zone, he's got a real good shot against his ball. Club. And, and he does it. Chicago's an aggressive hitting team. Doug's not going to overpower anybody, but because he's keeping the ball down, it's certainly going to help him get him to swing at pitches, maybe just off the plate. And Danks is just going right after the Mariners right now with a pretty good fastball and a cutter. How about Danks? It's an old-fashioned pitching duel, man. It's that uh, that cutter down and in. It's a tough pitch to lay off of. Another nasty left-hander out there. Yeah, another in a series of. Swing and a miss by Rios. It's worked a full cap. There's Danks. Pitched really well last three starts against the Mariners, 2 0 with a 1.50 ERA. How about Rios? We were talking about Rios last night where he starts his hands below his belt. And I was talking to uh, Alonzo Powell, and I said, Give me somebody else who's done that recently. You know, we came up with, we can, remember, we, we yeah. sort of blanked. He said, Eric Davis. Not quite as exaggerated as this, but he had his hands kind of low when he was up there, you know, his initial approach. It just goes to show you that, you know, there's no right or wrong. Right. Everybody hits different. You can't cookie cutter everybody. 
And uh, when it's all said and done, just as long as the hands are loaded and up and ready to go, you know hands what? above the ball. The other thing I found that Greg Walker, the hitting coach, went back and looked at when he was an all-star in 08, and his hands were low. And started like this in spring training. He's hit the ball hard from day one. First month and a half of the season, he was hitting balls right at people, but hit bullets. And now the average comes in tonight at 307, but he's been hitting the ball with authority since day one. It's been a good start for him. That's something when I was talking to Darren Jackson, who works over on the radio for Chicago earlier in the season, he was saying the same thing at the time. I think he was hitting around, oh, I don't know, 260 or so. And he said, you know what, he's hitting the ball harder than anybody. He just hasn't had a lot of luck. And they were hoping that he would stay with it because the numbers weren't quite there for him yet, but it's paid off for him. I was thinking about hands being low. The one I came up with yesterday was Cal Ripley. Remember the one year he had him down? Oh, yeah. There's Goody. Turned the wrong way. Ball's hit a long way at the base of the fence. Rios to third. And he's getting a big stop sign from Jeff Cox as the throw comes all the way in. Good work by the umpiring crew, too, as they are in their full rotation. So second and third as Trinerco sends a long blast to the base of the fence in center field. He is terribly consistent. And this is just a bullet right over the head of Gutierrez pitch. It's tough when it gets hit right at you, but Franklin can't do anything but get back there and play it off one hop off the wall. And with nobody out, they hold Rios up. If there's two outs, they probably send him. And he was carrying the mail, too. Nice job of coming up and hitting your cutoff, man. Seems simple, but that's huge. 18th double for Kinerko. Mark Cutts, they fly out the left. Corners are up, Smoke and Lopez both playing up. Middle of the infield is back, so the Mariners will give up a run for an out. My ball left field going foul. So Fister struck out two, walked one, giving up three hits and trying to get out of it. Nobody out jam here in the fourth inning. Two and one to Mark Katze. That's been a really good pitch for Doug this year when things are going well. Started in, have it run back on the inside corner to the left handers. Try faint miss, three and one. Andrew Jones. Full count. Doug Fiston trying to get on the uh, get back on the winning track. Hasn't won since May 14th at Tampa Bay. Five innings, a 4 3 win. Since then, seven starts without a win. 0 and 4. ERA of 5.44. Three no decisions. He left twice with leads. Biggie stops it. Runs going to score. Bounces one over to Smoke. And gets the out. The Sox take a 1 0 lead. Looks like this might be a base hit. Nice play by Figgins. Throws a little two hopper over to first smoke, no problem handling it. Veteran Kotze, nice piece of hitting on his part with nobody out. Not only gets the runner in, but he also moves Canerco up to third base. Runners play their infield halfway with Canerco over at third. Drew Jones, scouting report on him, Mike. Throwing fastballs above the belt. Last night, 2 2 pitch. Breaking ball that didn't have much on it. It got socked. Deep left field for home run. I'll tell you what, in his prime, nobody played center field. I don't think better than that guy right there. Here's the pitch hit. Anything but a fastball. He unloaded on it. That sounded crispy. 421 feet. Home run for Jones is 13th. Here's the one two. Ooh. And 
home run for Jones over 401. He's six behind Duke Snyder for 45th place all time. Two and two. Got him. The two outs here in the fourth inning this Saturday. Mariners and Red Sox continue their series, and the first 20,000 fans take home a Felix Hernandez poster. It's thanks to the Pepsi Refresh Project. Be sure to support the Washington State Coalition Against Domestic Violence as they vie for a chance to win a $200,000 Pepsi Refresh grant. Vote now through August 17th by visiting MLB.com slash Pepsi Refresh or text Mariners to 76462. Two outs, third strikeout for Fister. Here's Brzezinski grounded out to short. Broke in bat, smokes got it. Feed the Fister. Nice job. And he does do a nice job as he gets runners in second and third. Just give up Minimum. one run. Not a bad deal there by Fister and Kevin. White Sox have a one nothing lead. Yeah, what do we have for you tonight? Hats, nothing but hats. <laughs> Listen, beauty's here. <laughs> Rushing the Christmas season a little bit. Rick Riz is Babe Ruth. He printed out a Babe Ruth picture from Babe's last year, and he wore a hat just like that. Of course, Kevin Kremen had the uh, Burt Lancaster Moonlight Graham. Yes. Hat from Field of Dreams. A little Cary Grant action, too. Yeah. Gutierrez, Lopez, and Bradley here in the fourth. Thanks had a rough outing against Minnesota last time out, but came away with the victory. And he has really been trending upward since early June. That will get into the glove of Mr. Jones. One out since June 5th. Thanks. Five and two at 3.56 ERA. Big part of what these White Sox have done it. How does anybody, how does team in baseball right now? All right, your day, both of you guys. Who's that? Any thanks? Who's he remind you? Wow. I'm trying to think of somebody. It's Miss Skell. We were time. talking about his cutter earlier, and we yeah. mentioned Abbott, mm -hmm. Lighter, Finley, yeah. Langston. Big he's just he's another crafty left hander. Knows how to get people out. Take a look at our Mercedes pitch count coming up. And there you have it. Good splits. Bradley struck out his first time.
I would say, though, out of all of them, the way he falls off the mound, the way he takes his hands up is a little bit more like Al Leiter than any of them. What do you say? The way he breaks, yeah. way he breaks yeah. his hands and the way he kind of falls off and does that high knee kick. Yeah, I would agree with that. Al, of course, threw about, what, four or five miles yeah. an hour harder. So, Al, a couple of weeks ago in uh, New York, he's yeah. worked for MLB Network and the Yankees uh, Network, yes, Yankees Entertainment. Does a good job. Two and two, two outs, nobody on. Three and two to Bradley. Down low is aboard. Second walk here in the fourth inning. This Thursday, pick up the latest. Mariners trading card collection. Mariners and Red Sox are going to open up a four game series. First 20,000 fans get a 2010 edition of the cards thanks to the Seattle City Light. Make sure you get here early. Trade cards with other fans. Complete your set. Have a whole bunch of laughs there, too. For tickets, visit Mariners.com or any Mariners team store. Casey Kochman. They had a tough at bat last night against Matt Thornton. Bases were loaded. Thornton got him on three pitches and just took it right up, right up the ladder. Mariners left 10 men on last evening. Casey with the one hit for the Mariners so far it was an infield hit, chopped it over the mound, was able to beat it out. Speed kills, Michael. You would know. <laughs> <laughs> the 0 2. Oof, great eye. Tim Hevely informing the uh, media about the latest update on Eric Bedard. Still experiencing some irritation. It's evaluated by the team doctors. And hear the entire report, but my thought is I'm not <laughs> expecting him back this year. Doesn't sound like it. Way outside, two and two. And he definitely could have been helpful. We're talking about dance when a lefty it throws good, got a good cutter. He's another guy. When he was out there yep. and he was with Baltimore, he was led the league in strikeouts. Two and two to catch him. Oh my goodness. Good thing he hit that. It hit him right in the chest. How about that? Take a look at the swing by Casey. <laughs> it's self defense. Sam, yes, it is. <laughs> oh, Rocky did hit him. Right thigh. <laughs> Stick around long enough, right, Jay? And you see it all. Just about. It's a great game. God says RBI ground out in the fourth. Only tally so far. Pitch to Kochman popped up. Zinski has the play. Mariners are gone in the fourth. One nothing White Sox in the middle game of a three game set.
Nothing lead here in Seattle at Safeco Field. Gorgeous night to be watching baseball. Let's see Ramirez leads up. Ramirez with an infield hit his first time. One for four last evening with a stolen base. But Fister's done a nice job giving up just one run to these White Sides. Well, blistered right off of Lopez's glove. That's a base hit. Hot corner, you bet. And playing up even with the bag. You see Lopez, ball hit hard, hooking away from him, goes off the end of his glove. Well, it's probably about 100 miles an hour coming down there at him. Every bit. White Sox, best hitting team in the majors since June 19th, a 319 average. Three consecutive innings now. They've got their leadoff man on. Some fancy pitching by Doug Fist in the last inning. That could have been a disaster. Good ones talk about damage control all the time. Jamie Moore used to talk about that. I remember talking to the pitchers all the time. Sometimes you just have to give up one, just don't give up three. That's exactly what Doug was able to do. Nice piece of pitching on his part. Here's a strike to Gordon Beckham. Ball club's going to hit the ball out of the ballpark and they will run. We've got 85 stolen bases, second in the American League, the Maris are third. Jerry Corum, Ozzy Gann, another strike. Tampa Bay leads the American League in stolen bases. 0 oh 2. Sure out. Ramirez advances to second. One down. Top of the order coming up. And today's game is brought to you by Budweiser, official beer of the thirst inning. Let's check out the crowd of the Budweiser thirst inning and see who's enjoying the game. Great panoramic view of Safeco Field. Top the order, Juan Pierre. Gets it down the line. Trouble. That'll get a run in. And Pierre digging for extra bases as each row plays it off the sidewalk. RBI double. Juan Pierre's 18th run batted in. 2 0 Chicago. And Pierre with his 10th double of the season. It's like Doug breaks his bat, hits it right off the end of the bat, hooks it inside the bag. He tra trades places with Ramirez, who was out at second base. 12 consecutive games with a double, all part of that 319 batting average since June 19th. This ball club, as you know, hot. 27 of its last 35, they've won. There's Vizcello for two. Mariners with one hit tonight. Infield hit by Kochman. Back in the second inning. Left three men on thus far. Thanks to struck out five. Walked two. A struck right field. Going back. Ichiro can't get it. Going back to Pierre. And they'll put the hold up on him. Runners at the corners. Yet another base hit for Vizquel and the White Sox. 
Ichiro playing shallow out in right field. Nomar squares this up. It's just a line drive over his head. In fact, Pierre wasn't sure if Ichiro was going to be able to catch it or not. So he's not able to score from second base, even though that ball one hops off the warning track. Doug Fister could really use a double play ball now. Tough hitter Alex Rios. Single. Walked and scored. Big night last night with three runs batted in on a sacrifice fly and a two run homer. Said this is the toughest stretch he's ever been in. Player, coach, or manager. The season that the Mariners are going through at 36 and 57. 3 and 13 in the month of July. Trying to weather it. Somehow get out of it. 2 0. Oh. That finds a hole. Base hit Rios, RBI, Pierre scores, it's 3 nothing Chicago. RBI number 55 for Rios. So Rios, Alan Canerco, and Quentin in the RBI category. Take a look at it, it's just a ground ball. That's what Fister was trying to get was a ground ball. Unfortunately, it found a hole over on the left side, so he'll pick up an RBI as Ricadero will go out and have a conversation with Doug. Slow things down a little bit with the White Sox as well as they've been playing, Dave. You certainly don't want to have the big inning and get out of this game with Danks on the mound who's throwing the ball well. It can happen. Hey, when you're traveling outside the Northwest this season, take the Mariners with you. Subscribe to MLB.tv today and see every Mariners game live or on demand on your computer. Visit Mariners.com to order and get more details. MLB.tv baseball everywhere. The new haircut for the, the youngsters there. The Mohawks working. That's his glove with him. All right. One of the real consistent performers in Major League Baseball, Paul Knurka. Doubled over Gutierrez's head. Fourth inning. One for two. One and one. A lot of runs being scored in Major League Baseball today. Look at the scoreboard. A lot of double digit scores and a bunch of scores that are close to double digits. Bard and runner advances. Here's Vince Scale. He is out. They got a nice recovery by Josh Bard. Well done. That'll help. Take a look at it. Josh doing a nice job keeping the ball in front of him, then gets rid of it quickly. Oh, that was close. Mm -hmm. I think Lopez maybe blocked him out a little bit with his leg in front of the bag. Jeff Nelson with the call at third base. Two and one. Good hitter here, and this is going to have to really be a good pitch. Three and one with Katze on deck. Three and two. Rios will take off at first base. He can run if this ball ends up in the outfield somewhere. The guys are going to get it in in a hurry. 3 2 pitch. Rios takes off. Pulled the string on him. Strikes out. Turnerko. Big, big out. Nonetheless, 
A couple of runs for the White Sox, who now lead it 3 0. <laughs> Left it back at the ranch. <laughs> Justin Smoke, Josh Barr, Jack Wilson here, bottom third of the order in the fifth inning. One hit on the board for the Mariners. John Danks has really been something. His last three starts against the Mariners, he's gone eight innings in each of them, and he has been a commanding presence out there. Today the difference has been his cutter just living inside on the right handed headers. So he's done to this point. Two and two. Smoke starting the day. Eight for twenty seven. As a Mariner, 296, 2 and 2. A stroke center field slice and away from Rios. He runs it down. Fine play. We saw just a little bit of the wide of the ball. Nice swing by Justin going the other way. The inside out swing. Look, maybe he had a chance and hit it in the gap. Talked about Rios' speed. Runs it down even though the ball is slicing away from him. Smoke hit it hard. Nothing to show for it. He's 0 for 2. Josh Bard, the hitter, struck out on a 3 2 pitch. Third inning. Pitch count to 62 pitches. He has been efficient so far in this game. Two balls, two strikes. Thanks in the night. Five Ks, two walks. Swing and fouled into Przinsky's glove. Two outs. Another strike out for Danks is six. Take a look at the Quest High Speed Pitch. It's brought to you by Quest High Speed Internet. Danks at 94, Doug Fisker chopping at 90. Jack 
Wilson. Walked his first time up. Mariners 0 and 4 against these White Sox. Put up a run on eight hits, but they left 10 last night. Here's one attempt. Thanks all over. Mariners are done in the fifth. Five innings complete here at Seattle. It's 3 nothing White Sox. You care that it was an infield hit? <laughs> That's right. Leading off, followed by Andrew Jones and A.J. Pierzynski. Doug Fister could use a one, two, three in and kick save. Slowed it up. Figgins. Dug out by Smoke. Well done. And I think you're right, Dave. It is a kick save. Helps himself out so Figgins can come across. Gets rid of it quickly. Accurate throw for Smoke. Easy short hop pick for him. Gets caught saved by a step and a nice play by Figgins. Andrew Jones is struck out twice. What scouting report you got on Jones? Case of a guy you know get you know get late in your years in your career can't catch up with that 90 plus man. Well, I think you, yeah, you throw him fastballs and see if he can try to keep him up around the belt somewhere. You're going to throw breaking balls. Do exactly what Doug just did. Throw it off the plate. See if he'll chase it. Well, two strikes. And the tendency is to try to cheat a little bit, get that swing going. Exactly what Andrew did on that last fastball that was away from him. All he's going to do is roll over on that pitch. Well, two strikes. Had one there, three and two. That's a good change of down. Herzinski waits on deck. Swing and a miss. Pull the string on him. Beautiful. Strikeout number five. Three times he's gotten Jones. Two outs here in the sixth and catch live music and learn some new dance steps at Dancing Till Dusk this Thursday at Freeway Park in downtown Seattle from 6 to 9 p.m. Check the event calendar at downtownseattle.com for the complete dancing till dusk schedule. It's always good stuff. It's in all kinds of uh, little ballroom dancing, little cha cha, little merengue.
Krasinski 0 for 2. One two to AJ. White Sox starting the day two and a half up on Detroit. Detroit got smoked by uh, Texas today. Eight nothing. That game was four nothing late. We had left the radio uh, our radio booth and came back and there's four more up on the board. I believe Mr. Cruz was involved in some of that run scoring. 0 oh, 2. Mariners right now have been one hit through five by John Danks, and that was an infield hit. Field 2. And Doug Fister now 86 pitches. In the game, AJ just keeps fighting them off. Five Ks for Fister, one shy of his career high. It's six against Minnesota. Thank him, May 31, a 5 4 loss to that ball club. One and two. It was near. It looked like Krasinski was headed back to the dugout. I think he thought he was punched out. I <laughs> absolutely agree with him. He's, he can do it now. So six strikeouts to tie his Fister's career best. Now all he needs is some run support. Danks has been tough. One hitting the Mariners through five. Pretty good. Three nothing White Sox. Tee it up again tomorrow. And then the Red Sox come to town as Ichiro leads off. Strike one. Ichiro, Figgins, and Gutierrez top of the order here in sixth inning. Thanks has been tough, Mike. It you're gonna have to telepathically get some messages to the boys here. They get one in one hit. It's an infield hit. Well, you'd like to see him make them a little bit uncomfortable. So if each one begins to get things started, put some pressure on them. One and two to each each row. Hit by pitch last time out. Coming off a of one for five last night. One two. Once it in play, Ramirez will hurry. Dug out. Got him. 
play by Ramirez. Friday, the Mariners and Red Sox continue their series here at Safeco Field. Donate your old cell phone and accessories to the Verizon Wireless Hopeline cell phone drive. It's to support local shelters and victims of domestic violence. Collection boxes will be stationed at all gates as well as guest services at those locations around Safeco Field. Figgins stands in, struck out, hit into a double play. On his way on, nothing doing there, one and one. It's like the Apple iPhone 4. Not having any antenna problems, it appears. Taking advantage of the fine improved camera. Hope somebody, hope that didn't hit anybody. Good grief, that ball was smoked in there. It did hit somebody. Yikes. Hate to see that. All in two strikes to Figgins. Two and two. Takes one of these guys exudes a lot of confidence out there. He's got a very positive body language. 6'2, 210, 25 years old out of Austin, Texas. Well, so far, he's just going right at the guys. Fastballs working both sides of the plate. Yeah, he blows away Figgins for strikeout number seven. Two outs here in the sixth. They said getting loose in a hurry out in the Mariners' pen. See the left hander. Able to get his feet wet on the last road trip down in Anaheim. Gutierrez fly out to center, fly out to right. Quick one to Gutierrez, said and pitched on Saturday. 7 6 Angels win over the Mariners. He won an inning of two thirds. Scoreless baseball. Last year with the White Sox 13 and 11, the year before 12 and 9, he was 6 and 13 and 07. He's an up, down, in, out kind of pitcher tonight. It's been very effective. Some throw one of the few change ups pitched before the last one to Franklin. Again, it's just been a lot of fastballs. Going to cut her in on the hands of the right handers. Three and one. And that pitch put him aboard as we tell you that this copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Seattle Mariners and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. The accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Seattle Mariners. Two outs with a base runner for the Mariners. That is walk number three issued by Danks. A little bit of a feel here, so AJ Przinski going out. He's off to a fast start, throwing a lot of strikes. I think at one point he had 21 strikes to four balls, but now 50 strikes, 32 balls, 82 pitches for the game. Lopez 0 for 2 today, coming off an 0 for 4 last night. Change up 84 miles an hour. White Sox play Lopez straight away. One hit today for the Mariners, an infield hit by Kotsman back in the second. 
backhand by Viskel. And he makes the play. 43 years old. Filling in at third base. Doing a heck of a job. That is a major, major big time play by the veteran and soon to be Hall of Famer, Omar Viskel. Mm-hmm. And my wife saw the chat you did last night. She loved it. Another gorgeous night here in Seattle. These are breathtaking pictures. Chris Seddon making his first Mariner appearance here at Safeco Field. Debuted a few days ago in Anaheim. Called up from AAA Tacoma. And the young left hander will face Ramirez, Beckham, and Pierre. 8 9 and 1 for the White Sox. Sharply to Figgins. Ramirez is done. Ramirez had a couple infield hits. First two at bats. Fister had a nice night tonight. 90 pitches for him, gave up three earned runs over the six innings he pitched. Similar line to what Paulie had last night. Again, lack of run support tonight. He's behind in the game. Given up uh, in the American League, giving up three runs is no crime. You're giving yourself a chance to win a game. Keeping your Team brought back to the side of the All Star game over in Eastern Pennsylvania as he strikes out Beckham to there. Take a look at it. It's like a fastball that's up and in. The Beckham just can't catch up to it. He threw that fastball by him right on the inside corner. Said and retired all five men that he faced three days ago in Anaheim. Top of the order, here's Juan Pierre. Play 
last time the bigs for seven September 27 of 07 September 29 of 07 it was with Florida went against the Mets getting a two thirds seven hits five runs five earned runs. That's the typical welcome that kids usually get when they show up to the big leagues isn't it. <laughs> Take your lumps kid. <laughs> bang you bang boom. Three and one. The lows on deck. Here, pitching coach. A good luck at setting in the second period. This is a good one here. Tires aside in the seventh. About those hits, Maris needs some. They have just an infield hit by Kotzman back in the second inning. Brought to you by the Washington Traffic Safety Commission. Hey, X-52, it's happening right now. X-52 means extra patrols every week. They're looking for speeders now. Remember, slow down or pay up. See that gentleman with the, uh, the fruit hat? That's real fruit. The Kermit Miranda fans would be proud. Milton Bradley, Casey Kochman, Justin Smoke here in the seventh inning. One hit, an infield hit by Kochman in the second inning. Thanks behind quickly to an O'Milton tonight. Strikeout and a walk. When you look at Danks, 86 pitches pitching here in the seventh. Too much pressure on him, although he's falling behind 3 and 0 to Milton. Casey with the one hit, waits on deck. Doing a nice job here tonight. 3 0. And Milton's aboard. He walked in a 3 2 pitch in the fourth. Following the Mariners and Red Sox game this Sunday, kids have a chance to run around the bases. It's presented by Key Bank. All youngsters 14 and under. Come on down to the field and take a lap around the bases. Get your tickets to run the bases and see the Mariners and Red Sox by visiting Mariners.com or any Mariners team store. Well, good stuff All right. there. Yeah, mom and pop showing up. I like it, representing nicely. Krasinski will make his second trip out to the mound. And talk to Danks. It's five straight balls from Danks. Milton Bradley is the first Mariner leadoff man to reach base.
There's a strike one and one. And then looking out to the Chicago bullpen, looks like Matt Thornton. Start throwing out there. I was hoping you weren't going to say that. You, you know that he has to throw. <laughs> you know that. <laughs> have, we, have they played a game against Washington right? where he hasn't been right? up? <laughs> I was talking to a couple of people about that the, earlier today. I said he looks. He doesn't look like an all star. He looks like all universe over these last four years against the Mariners. I'd be willing to say Mariners don't have more than about three hits off. You seen him work up a sweat yet? Uh, that would be negative. Got a piece of case right in the face, I think. Hit him in the eye. Yeah, he looks like he's all right. He'll take a look at it. Ball bounce off the ground and come up and hit him somewhere in the face. Right in the ear. Never good. No. Runner goes. Oh, oh. You get pitchers matchups like that sometimes, and I'm sure you've gone against a lot of guys. You see him, you see a guy get up and go, oh, here we go again. Jeez, you're killing me. Where am I at in the order? <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Hope am I gonna miss him? <laughs> <laughs> Sometime maybe next month. Trust me. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Really. And on the flip side, he knows it too. He oh, knows yeah. he's dominating big time. Talking about Matt Thornton. And Sergio Santos, a converted infielder, has done a nice job for the White Sox. He's heating up as well. One, two pitch, swing, and a miss. And Kochman's gone. Strikeout number eight. Mariners hope to get some dominance themselves tomorrow from Felix Hernandez. Seven and six, a 2 9 0 ERA. Gets Gavin Floyd. Felix has been getting deep into just about every game now. What last seven, eight starts? Justin Smoke 0 for 2. This is what these boys have been waiting to show here on TV. We're smoking hot. That's a great <laughs> man. That's a group effort. They got the whole platoon now. I hope somebody gets a picture of that. They got to show Justin. And you know what? They get thumbs up. Spelling correct. The boys going out to center field. They have been entertained. I'd like to see their. Favorite son right here, Justin Smoke, pride of Goose Creek, South Carolina, do something. 0 and 1. It's great going over to that White Sox clubhouse and you talk to the fellas over there. So many facets of facets of the game are working right for him right now. Broken bat looper. And there's Ramirez throwing across to Milton Bradley. What, a, what, what, was, what the hey? What was that? Wow. Okay. Double play. Inning over.
Thank you, Angie. Dave Sims with Jay Buner rejoining us here with Mike Flowers and Chris Seddon. Well, pitch to Omar Vizquel. Strange inning. Uh, I'd like to get your analysis of the how that last <laughs> inning ended, Mr. Buner. Uh, that's how not the base run right there, boys and girls. Line drive base hit for Vizquel. It looks like Mr. Bradley is still a little upset over it out there in left field after he fields the base hit. You know, there's not a place you can hide when you do something like that. There's no, there's no hole that you can stick your head in. It's not like you're an ostrich out there. I mean, that's and the crowd lets you know it, and deservedly so. So. Do you think he I'm, forgot how many outs there were? Or do you think Ramirez maybe digged him a little bit when he came in, like he was going to let that ball drop? Okay. Either. <laughs> no, well, I'm just saying. I mean, either, either way, no, you obviously. Agree. He was way, going to do that pull up if he didn't. But that's up to Smoke, not busting it down first baseline. I mean, right. he's Milton gotta, has to stay there. He's got to stay there. He's got right. nowhere to go. Right. I mean, if it just so happens that it drops, then you just trade places. Right. Rios, the hitter, got an RBI single back in the fifth. Single in the first, walk and a run scored. Another good night for Alex. It's two for four with three runs batted in last evening. That's one of those plays where you just want to keep running through second base up over the up over the fence. Have you ever done it? I have. I I uh, I have. Yes. Yeah, I've done it too. Yeah. Circumstances. A long, a long pitch inning where you're just kind of going and going, right. and then you just totally just brain cramp, man. You play the game long enough, it's going to happen. Right. Chance for two here. And they get it done. Oh, this kid's coming and done a great job. Little audition for him right here. Yeah. Did a nice job down in Anaheim. Threw the ball well down there. Getting a safe go field debut. Well, he made the, made easy. Made the, what, uh, all, AAA All Star team. I yes. know it's yep. a heck of a lot different down there than it is here, but I tell you what, you, you come up here and you keep doing what you're doing, you're opening up some eyes. Give you a chance to go into spring training and. Get you a job. A cup some, of coffee right here for show, him. Showed some nice poise the other day, retiring all five guys that he faced. He's got Canerco here. I was saying earlier, Canerco was a, so consistent. Oh, man. Other than that one year where he struggled a little bit, but man, he just bounced right back. I mean, he's got some thunder, no doubt about it. This whole lineup's got some thunder. Pretty impressive. I mean, they got it. They really got it all. I mean, mm -hmm. starting pitching, their bullpen is filthy. Oh, uh, their defense is unbelievable, and they got some guys socked from one to nine. So, into left center field, Gutierrez. Good effort. Can't get it. Canerco will get into second base with a double. And we were talking about Thornton. We showed him up before. Every time Mike and I would see Thornton, we just look at each other, shake our heads, like, here we go again. Yeah, it goes to the bullpen. It's pretty much a slam dunk, wouldn't you say? That's I mean, there's no such thing as a slam dunk. But I no, tell you but what, you're not going to win the games at the rate they've been winning them unless your bullpen is exactly. doing their job and they have some power arms out there. There goes 19th double. He combined Thornton, J.J. Puts, and then there's J.J. on the left and Bobby Jenks on the right. That guy on the right can throws, what, about a million, I think? I think Santos can rush it up there, oh, too. Oh, they can. They just, big boys are just bring it. It's good to see JJ. They're bouncing back after last year. Yeah, he said he's completely healthy. Well, I tell you what, they not only JJ bouncing back, but they, how about Freddie Garcia as well? I mean, my goodness. That's he was going to be their five guy. How about, he's that's number one. He's their one. He's got a 93 record. I tell you what, when that guy was with us, he was an absolute stud. Wanted the ball. He would have taken it every fourth day if you gave it to him. Love that guy. I mean, you got a lot of love guys that want the ball. Did a nice job for us. Nice little deal getting when we traded Randy Johnson at the trade deadline to get him and John Halama Lama and Mr. Gian. They did a pretty nice job. Because at the time, you never know what you're going to get. That panned out pretty good for us. Well, stroke center field. Goody coming on. Nice catch. Tremendous jump as per usual. Nothing across. We go to the eighth. Mariners being one hit by John Danks here at Safeco Field. Back with more in a moment.
Beautiful, beautiful night here for fans in Seattle. First pitch popped up off the bat of Josh Bard. Przinski has a play, and there's one down. Josh O for three. Mariners calendar. Let's check it out. It's brought to you by Sleep Country USA. White Sox for one more tomorrow, then the Red Sox come in, and then four more games at Chicago. Oh boy, it gets easy. And then Justin Morneau, I'm Mike and I talked a bit about this. We we're willing to bet he that he'll back. be back for that series. And then the Texas ball club comes in. You saw what they did tonight. Eight nothing at Detroit. I mean, you think they're playing hot right now? There's a lot of teams right now that are hot. Jack Wilson a walk. Tried to bunt his way on was retired. And a few that aren't. So it's ex Mariner night in the bullpen down there. JJ puts in Matt Thornton. And now thanks. He's been he's been in command. I, I think he's looking for the C and the G next to his name. Yeah, they're just he's just a chance. One hundred and two pitches for him. Man. I didn't see him shake off yet, has he? I don't believe he has. I think they're on the side. Safe to say they're on the same page. Him and AJ. This White Sox ball club is sixth in ERA. You add that to all the other good stuff that they do. A little low. Vacuum. Two down. Amazing. All right, huh? so give me, amazing, give me amazing for a utility part time guy, huh? 43 years old. Man, I tell you, and he's got that same throw no matter where it is. It's always like right on the money, bang, bang. He makes it look easy. Look at him. Talk to people from Chicago. They said he's been one of the big differences in them winning games because when they put him in at third, he's just making every play over there and helping the pitching staff out. And when you have somebody like Danks and Burley also who will throw inside with that cutter, they're going to pull a lot of balls down at third. Takes care of the small ball, too. Yeah. He's already moving up with Ichiro. There is a base hit that gets out of the infield. <laughs> Second hit tonight for the Mariners. The next kind of a day, huh? You were just waiting to say that. Well, what else was I going to say? At some point. <laughs> Good to see. Ichiro picks up a base hit. Be nice to see a little two-out lightning is what it'd be nice to see. Yeah, Jake can get on there and get good ears. Chances hit two home runs off of Danks. Be nice, wouldn't it? One swing, bam. Tie ball game. I like it, Michael. There's Franklin. Comes as again. And I think he is going to take Mr. Danks and tell him he threw a heck of a ball game. Be JJ. And it's going to be JJ puts back at safe gold field for the first time since he was dealt to New York.
get something going, and they're going to have to beat one of their old teammates, J.J. Putz. But let's review. John Danks, outstanding tonight. Well, he really had it going, especially early in the game, commanding the strike zone. Lost it for a little bit about mid-game with his command and walked a couple of guys and actually hit Ichiro at one point. But cutter, cutter, cutter inside, just pounding the right-handed hitters in there. Really did a nice job. Ended up with eight strikeouts for the game, 107 pitches, 68 of them for strikes. Safe to say he was sitting in a rocking chair out there. Yeah. Turned in some really good work as we look at our Suzuki Kazashi game recap. Katze drives in a run on the fourth. Pierre and Rios in the fifth. Mariners with just their second hit just moments ago from Ichiro. That adds on to the Kotchman infield hit in the second inning. Now JJ puts. He's an all-star performer with the Mariners. Said he's healthy. The elbow's good to go after the operation. JJ getting his uh, degree from the University of Michigan in sports management next month, thanks to Fred Wilpon, who's a UM graduate and the owner of the New York Mets. Thanks. Outstanding performance tonight. I think it's three for nine against JJ. JJ has had a good season. Five and two in the area of 1.51 in 35 games. Wow. I said that's pretty good. Center field Rios is playing very shallow. Tracks it easily. And that will do it. So JJ Putz comes in and puts out a quick fire. Three-nothing White Sox. Racer this season to give you more information and insight into the game. Chris Seddon working his third inning of action here at Safeco Field. Dave Sims, Mike Flowers, Jay Buner with us this evening. 0 and 1 to Andrew Jones. Jones trying to launch there. I think he does pretty much every time. <laughs> <laughs> See what the adjustment with two strikes right here. Seth looking to put the hat trick on him right now. A little change piece right here. Spin him in the ground.
Jack Wilson. So it's small corner. Over four for Jones, three strikeouts. One out here in the ninth that'll bring up Przinsky. AJ is 0 for three. White Sox runs one in the fourth, two in the fifth. John Danks, fabulous this evening, over seven and two thirds. Two hits, one run, four walks, eight caves. Bobby Jenks, the closer, is heating up. One and two record of four, seven, six ERA. He's got 20 saves. Mm. Said and throwing a lot of arms and legs at you. He's done a nice job. Got the hitters shaking their heads. It means you're doing your job. One and two. Brzezinski to be followed by Alexi Ramirez. Said originally picked by the Rays, round five of the 2001 June draft. Swing and a miss. Brzezinski goes down, swinging for the second time tonight. Two outs. Throwing the ball well. Have to be impressed. He's coming in, throwing strikes, mixing speeds up. Nice change up tonight. Real nice change up. Second strikeout for Sutton. We check the Jack in the Box in game box score for the White Sox. That's what they've done to this point. There's Ramirez. White Sox profile their eighth in batting, eighth in runs, fourth in home runs, second in stolen bases, and sixth in ERA. Adds up pretty nicely for them. Bigger numbers. They've won 27 of their last 35. The sentence two and one to Ramirez. Alexi tonight, a couple infield hits and a ground out to Figgins. Yanks this one deep left field. Going back, Bradley, and it's in the bullpen home run. Golfed one out of here in a 2 1 pitch. Home run number nine for Ramirez. It's 4 0 White Sox. Their 105th home run as a team. Gets a fastball down in the zone. He golfs it out to left field. Pitch is actually a ball. He's got some sneaky pop. He does. I mean, for a little wiry guy, he can get some bat speed. That's his ninth home run of the year. Remember, uh, last year in Chicago, he had a couple. Uh, I know we made, I believe it was two trips to Chicago last year. I think it was the first trip in Chicago, we had a couple. Fly ball right field, going back each row. He's under it. That's third out. Here in the ninth, the Sen gives up a home run. Last stops for the Mariners. They'll have to get it done against Bobby Jenks. Yet it's Lopez and Bradley coming up.
here in Seattle. Bottom of the ninth innings. It's been all Chicago tonight. Four nothing White Sox. Gutierrez Lopez and Bradley coming up. And they'll be facing one of the premier closers in the game, Bobby Jenks. Here's the profile of this big fella. 34 innings pitch 40 two strikeouts for him 16 walks only given up two home runs so far this year. Surprising with the high ERA though. Yeah. Save 20 out of 21. This is not a save opportunity. For him. Tell you what you look at this ball club. And look at the their competition in the central division. It's going to be a fun race Chicago Detroit Minnesota. I mean as hot as they're playing they're only two and a half up over Detroit. So they better stay busy. Finish off a win here. They go up three and a half. Detroit lost to Texas big. Ozzy Guillen in good shape right now. Up by the Gutierrez. You look at what they've done. Talking to Ed Farmer and Darren Jackson from the radio crew. Cleveland's really hurt. For four and eight. For four and eight against the Tribe. Three games under 500 in Central. Isn't it amazing how one team can have your number. 15 and 3 against the National League Club. Kill them. Kill Kill them out. <laughs> That's good news. They <laughs> swept. They swept Atlanta. Four and two against the Cubs. Two and one against Florida. Swept yeah. Washington. Swept Pittsburgh. And Atlanta was hot. Yeah. And if you beat Strasburg, that's even more of a feather in your cap. Well, I'd like to see him in person. Well, I would too. That kid brings it. Rick Brilly, another fine pitchers. Still the best play of the year. Remember, made it on the opening day, right? Was, that's the, that was that set the bar right out of the oh, game. They were showing uh, MLB Network showing plays of the first half the other day, and that boys was your winner. Hands <laughs> well, You can't go out and try to practice that and do it any better. Mark, send them home early, Burley. Eight and eight record of four one eight ERA. And the other remarkable thing about the play was a comeback to hit off. He chases it down. It's like an AJ Brzezinski he says, Hey, I was going down to back up. And I see this guy coming out of nowhere. He says, He's not the fastest guy. And he scoops it one motion with the glove between his legs. And Kernerko goes, Yeah, I got it. No look. Yeah, right? It was a no look, just flip it. It was perfect right to him. Absolutely perfect. I saw those games have flipped at that play. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, look at little. Oh, he has just been spectacular. Oh. Is he any good? Wow. <laughs> Makes it look easy, too. That ball's a rocket. And it comes up a little bit on him. Still has the good hands. Probably the best hands I've ever seen. Never Jay. seen a bad hop, man. It's unbelievable. Just, Michael, you know some of the stuff he does. He's got so many little tricks that he can do. He can walk up on a ground ball and kind of shove his hand down and let it hit him in the palm of the glove. And he sticks his hand up and goes right to his hand. Mm. It's amazing stuff he can do. Mike, right. you made a good call last night. The, the bad hop. Yeah. Said most guys are looking for right good checks. Yeah. Right. He at least gets a glove on it. I remember in the kingdom going out and taking ground balls every day. And Watching him work out and talking to him one time about the turf. They said they didn't like it. It was too easy. What? Get lazy. Yeah, he said it was too easy. Didn't like the turf. No kidding. Yeah. Special, special guy. He grew up playing on some pretty bad he, and fields. He was, that's man. what he said. That's what he <laughs> that's said. That's what helps. Ramirez. No way. Oh, my goodness. Uncle. It's the third time we've seen him make that play in so far in the series already. Is that another? I mean, he just went up a little low. Look at him. He no, just no, he no, went no, up no. them. He goes, he'll throw it back to me. You were saying about the oh. defense earlier. My goodness. Well, take a look at this. Just ranging over. All of his momentum going away from first base. and still has enough strength in his arm to get it across the diamond, and it's accurate. I mean, we've seen that this third time we've seen that play. Oh. Nice pick by Canerco Real over nice at first. Pick. Look at him. I think they're having some fun. Yes, they are. When it will do that, won't it? Well, that's what they said. Uh, JJ and going, and going yard. Right. <laughs> yeah, in addition to that, JJ and uh, Brzezinski and a couple of guys I was talking to the last couple of days, they said, hey, man, it is. It's been tremendous. Canerco said it's like high school. Just well, everybody's mashing. We're talking about it right now. You can tell they got a little friendly competition going between yeah. all of them. 
Looking so it makes it fun throughout the course of a long season. Looking for a way to save money going to and from the airport? Take Link Light Rail for schedules. Visit soundtransit.org. A lot of fun. And you think Jinx is loving it, too? It's going way to go. Thank you. Just serve it up. Somebody's going to glove it. Two and one. Mr. Bradley's looking to get squishy right here on a fastball. Make up for that little pace for him, man. Two and one to Milton. Two and two, fellow. Milton tonight strike out a couple of walks. Doubled off of easy pop pop up infield pop to the shortstop Ramirez. Two and two, two out. Swing and a miss fouled into AJ's glove, and that's a ball game. Four nothing White Sox. It was all John Danks. They had plenty of offense and a defense in the last inning or so. Boys was really spectacular. Well, you take a look at the Mariners. They got their best going tomorrow. Felix is on the mound. They have to find a way to get some offense against Gavin Floyd, who has been tough on the Mariners at times. So the guys offensively need to give Felix some support tomorrow. Mariners fall to three and fourteen in the month of July. Right now we send you out 